Hello everyone, welcome back to It's a Wonderful Podcast, it's episode 67, and um, we had a nice horror movie last week with Ashley Davis, uh, Night of the Living Dead, for episode 66, but you know, there's no real significance to the number 67, so back to normal movies on It's a Wonderful Podcast. Uh, and back to also, I guess... Normal co-hosts, especially these days. Um, she's back, you know, she was going to be back. Uh, hear her all the time on Morgan Hasn't Seen, every week. Janine, hi, it's It's a Wonderful Podcast. Yay, you're back, yay. Hello, it's nice to be back. I love coming on here, so thank you for having me. Is it any different to when we record Morgan Hasn't Seen to when we, we uh, record episodes of, of this show? It's slightly different in the fact that you've probably seen the movie in this instance. So you, <laughs> it's slightly... you, you might not get as muddled on your words because you actually know what you're talking about now. It is slightly different in that I am competent on this show and incompetent on the other. That's exactly what you're saying. Thank you very much for that. Very. Well, I mean, I didn't uh, want to put it that way, but... Pleasant yeah. compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Janine, you are back. Yay. It's always great Yay, to me. have you yes, on Yay, It's a Wonderful Podcast because I know you see it as a version of Janine hasn't seen exactly. sometimes. Was today's movie a case of Janine hasn't seen? It was. What is today's movie we're doing? Episode 67. We are doing 1954's Sabrina. Yay, which is a wonderful rom com type movie, Billy Wilder. We're, we've been on a, a little bit of a Billy Wilder high recently, thanks to our double indemnity episode that I was joined by uh, James White Yay, James. to talk about that movie. And we talked a bit about Billy Wilder in general. And it's impossible to not love Billy Wilder. Because he, he, Sabrina is arguing, well, he's, you know, something like Sabrina, something as good as Sabrina, isn't considered a top tier Billy Wilder film by a lot of people. And it's kind of one of, it, it's, it's certainly one of my favourite romantic comedy type movies. And it has some pretty big stars in it, so for it to oh, not it, be. Yeah. I mean, the whole point of the movie is to see the three stars yes. uh, together. And you've got Humphrey Bogart, Audrey Hepburn, William Holden. Um, William Holden, who had already worked with Billy Wilder a few years before, four years before, on Sunset Boulevard. So, yay. Yes. Um, and he's great in Sunset Boulevard. I think he's better in Sunset Boulevard than he is in this I'd agree with because that. Because I think he's better at drama than he is at sort of sweet light-heartedness. But that is neither here nor there because he is still great. But yes, Sabrina from 1954. Sabrina is Audrey Hepburn. Sabrina is the chauffeur's daughter of a incredibly wealthy... Long Island, New York based uh, plastics family. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, they are the premier plastic uh, business. Which breeded some it would... pretty funny and silly segments in the film. <laughs> yes, which, you know, <laughs> such a thing that does include Humphrey Bogart jumping on a piece of plastic in between two tables to prove how. Durable. You know, sturdy, durable and sturdy it is. And if you ever wanted to see, you know, Humphrey Bogart do Olympic trampolining, then watch this movie. <laughs> I want to see Humphrey Bogart do Olympic trampolining. I think Olympic trampolining is one of the stupidest things in the Olympics. That's an actual thing? Olympic trampolining, of course it is. Are you, you know, serious? They all do the... 
they do the flips and they all get judged. It's like it's one of the like the technical stuff, you know, like that sounds like, like figure a, skate. That sounds like a sport you'd see on ESPN eight, the Ocho. <laughs> well, you know, like you get you get like in 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 like figure skating and stuff and yeah. gymnastics, where they have like the judges and they all go, oh, that was a eight point five or something. Seriously, you know, and they all get a point score it's like one of those technical gymnastic things where everybody does flips and they have to land properly and bounce properly and it's 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 ridiculous but yeah Yeah. olympic trampolining interesting you learn something new every day kids it probably doesn't get a lot of coverage as opposed to you know athletics (laughs) and swimming obviously not when when the olympics are on but uh yeah we digress so early on we do (laughs) and we're six minutes in we're already talking about olympic trampolining and not the movie so yeah so the the two there's two brothers they are humphrey bogart william holden the larrabee brothers that is the the family uh, the wealthy family and ultimately it's basically audrey hepburn uh who has been in love with David Larrabee, William Holden, for her entire life, uh, goes to Paris to kind of get away from everything and start afresh and become a new person. And try to forget then, about David. Try to forget about David. Because he does not love David. her. Because she's well, sad. David. Well, <laughs> David is a is a strange case in the fact that he's one of those people who has a new love of his life every two weeks. Yes, he's a bit of a womanizer. You could say that, as he always has the same play, Janine. Now, what is David Larrabee's exact play <laughs> to get a girl? He requests the band to play a special song. He does. Now, I can't exactly... Re- I think the name of the song is Isn't, Isn't it, it Romantic? Romantic, yes. Yeah. And then he gets two champagne flutes and puts them in his back pockets. Which I don't get how that works. Yeah, like, are suit pockets in the back of your pants, like, really... Like, aren't they, like, fake false pockets? Sometimes they are. And if they're not, they are very small. Yeah. So somehow he manages to fit two champagne flutes in the back pockets of his suit pants and hides them under his coat and gets a bottle of champagne and then escorts the woman to the tennis court. Where they uh, the, the indoor tennis court. The goal. indoor tennis court because... Not the outdoor tennis They're just goal. that bougie. And yeah, then he has a nice little romantic dance and a little flirty flirty and drinks some champagne and so fancy. And then whatever, whatever, whatever happens. <laughs> yes. And Sabrina um, sees this every time they have a big party because she's watching from her tree these fabulous parties and watching David and wishes that were her because she's so in love yes. with him. I mean, it can't be very nice. I, I don't get why Sabrina does this. Yeah, it's like torture. She's torturing herself. Why is she watching it all? Yeah. (laughs) She she just... I I guess to stimulate her imagination, just so she can put herself in that position in her mind, I guess. I suppose. I suppose. Do you know what actually saddens me about this movie? Is that... All the uh, suicide attempts... Well, yes, that too. Um, but we are also told that there is an indoor swimming pool and an outdoor swimming pool. I don't recall ever seeing a single swimming pool. Yeah, ain't nobody got no budget for that. <laughs> they have budget for an indoor tennis court and an outdoor tennis court. Yeah, well, they only show the outdoor tennis court for like five seconds. Hmm... <laughs> that's, that's your biggest complaint if that's your biggest complaint about the movie then I think Billy Wilder did a pretty good job <laughs> Billy Wilder always does a pretty good job I, 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 I love this movie it does start with that narration as well from Audrey Hepburn um, basically describing how rich the these people situation. are yeah. yeah the 
describing the Larrabee estate. And that's kind of cool. Um, I like that. But yeah, Audrey Hepburn ultimately is kind of perfect for this. Yes, you felt all her emotions. She played all the ranges really well. She was like very vibrant and vivacious and bubbly and very earnest and sweet. What Audrey Hepburn does very well is go from like extreme emotion to the opposite extreme emotion in one performance yes. flawlessly. She can go from like very kind of doe-eyed to very like smart and intelligent and yeah. And then sad and then really sad. Yeah. And then you know silly yes. and kind of yeah, goofy sometimes even. Uh I always say I prefer Roman Holiday Audrey Hepburn to Sabrina Audrey Hepburn. Um, simply, I think that is simply because in obviously Roman Holiday, she is, she's the rich princess who wants to have a silly day rather than the poor chauffeur's daughter. Who wants the rich person's day. Who, who, who goes to Paris and becomes <laughs> fancy. Yeah. Um... I mean, she's kind of equally silly in both. Oh, yes. But there's there's also a little bit more... I mean, the, the end of Roman Holiday is very emotional. But this one, she, she she's kind of allowed to show more of her acting, Range, more of her emotional yeah. acting. Yeah. In this. And like you said before, there's the whole sort of, let's... You know, start all the cars and gas ourselves, which yes. is nasty. So she gets very depressed and, and sees David with another woman. And she decides that she can't take it. So she writes a letter and goes into the garage and turns on all the cars and lays there to breathe in all of the <laughs> carbon monoxide. But then... Which is... is it it's very ne- I believe as well, eight cars in the chauffeur's uh, garage. 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 <laughs> garage. Garage. I refuse to say garage. It sounds <laughs> strange. It's called a garage. No, no that's not correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's just a little, just more more facts for a uh, schmodown study in how many cars that's did right. the chauffeur have in. In 1954, Sabrina, eight, eight cars, five points. Uh, <laughs> five points for game. Gryffindor. Five points for <laughs> Janine. She wins the game. Exactly. See? Oh, thank Useless you. facts thank help, you Janine. Yes, I appreciate that. And then... Useless facts do help. She is found by... Humphrey Bogart. Yes. Yay. Who... Um, I believe Janine finally realised how small Humphrey Bogart is. Yes, he's a tiny this movie. little man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a teeny little uh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, truly he is. Truly he is quite small. I mean, he's not Danny DeVito. No. But he's not... Um, I mean, he's heralded you know. as this like Hollywood <laughs> tough guy, and then you see how kind of tiny he is, and it's like this is the strange thing. Humphrey Bogart to me has never had a archetype to him. Are you sure? You know, yeah. I'm pretty sure he kind of has that archetype to people. He is, but he's also a romantic lead, yeah. and he's also a detective, and he's also. I like think the a, detective a, thing is what people get the tough guy vibe from. Meow, meow. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, but he's, I mean, he's not a tough guy in the same sense that like James Cagney's a tough Just guy. Just tough guy, as in like he's very serious and somewhat stoic, and you know, like he, that. He, he is. He's serious, but in his own kind of 
a clever way. He's not mm-hmm. serious in the set in the in the sense he's that he's s- dull. Like, he's serious in the yeah. sense that he's um he's direct. Yes. He he do, he never yeah, Bogart never uh, and he's, sort of he's charming. He has some charm. Oh, he's charming. Yes. He's charming for sure, but yeah, he he, he is kind of always playing a, a direct character even whatever he's playing he'll never kind of um he'll never get overly emotional even when it's a really emotional moment like later on in Sabrina Bogart's just like it's almost like rational like this is what makes the most sense right now so I'm gonna do this exactly. rather than um, express I'm, any like deep yeah. emotive <laughs> feelings yeah. yeah so he's Which, linus I mean, I, he's linus he the linus. older brother who's yeah. all about I mean, work I, and all about business unlike david who just likes to have fun yes but i mean linus keeps the business afloat yes. if linus didn't keep the business afloat david wouldn't be able to do all the fun stuff he's doing yes um, but no, I, I, in general, like Humphrey Bogart. Um, Pete, I know people do say, obviously, I mean, he's more, I feel like he's more I, I, an iconic actor than a sort of greatest actor of all time. Maybe that's simply because he was probably a bigger, or, or one of the bigger celebrities of the time. In Hollywood, rather than, you know, sort of one of the premier actors. Um, I feel I feel like, you know, look at the time. I feel like you've got people like Jimmy Stewart and people like that who are way better actors. Cary Grant and Clark Gable. And... Yeah. Yeah. Who are you know way better actors, and especially I, f- I, f- I also feel like uh, the women are much better at acting. In I've always I've always thought that in this whole era that we, you know, m- more often than not talk about on this show, the women are better actors. Than I the never men. really thought about that until you said it, and I'm like, it's kind of true. <laughs> You you can rattle off names of top draw actresses from this time more so than you can go. You can you can name iconic men for sure, and you can certainly name iconic women. But in terms of actual performances, performances range a, talent, yeah. And maybe that is an emotional thing, you know. Maybe that is a. Uh, why? Because we're so emotional, Morgan. No, no, I mean, maybe that is an emotional thing in the sense that screen men weren't so emotional, and when they were, it was noticed, and like a Jimmy Stewart. Of, and I think that stigma of the time of, like, men having to be a certain way. Yeah, maybe. That they really didn't have that space to go for it like they maybe wanted to or like they could. Yeah, maybe, and it's why it's, it's you know, so... So when actors uh, did something like that, it was very impressive, like James Dean or something. Yeah, like James... Yeah, absolutely. Um, but now that, that sort of thought just sort of came to me. Wow. And it is kind of quite true, because I, I think Audrey Hepburn is a way better actor than Humphrey Bogart. Yes. Um, even though, I mean... Who, the question, who's the bigger name, Humphrey Bogart or Audrey Hepburn, isn't really a conversation (laughs) that you can actually have because it doesn't, it won't go anywhere. Um, But but I think it's probably safe to say that William Holden is the lowest name. Yeah, (laughs) on the roster. On the roster, (laughs) even though he himself is a pretty iconic actor of the time and he was enough to actually woo audrey hepburn in real life oh sure yeah 
I mean, it's probably because he's a good six inches taller than Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I say this as though I'm six foot four. Yeah. I am taller than Humphrey Bogart, though. I know that for a fact. <laughs> so uh, I can always hold that card. Yeah. And I am I'm happy about that. It's very impressive. Oh, thank you. But yeah, um, we've set up the whole movie. What are some standout uh, moments, standout aspects of this movie for you? Um, I like when her and uh, Linus are on the boat together. You kind of yeah, kind when of they're this, going sailing. Yes, and they're listening to that "No More Bananas" <laughs> today song. <laughs> What is that song even from? I don't know. <laughs> what is what is uh, it's such a it's such Have a, you heard a, that on something ridic- else before? Yes. Seriously? Absolutely. <laughs> I as a as a young child at like seven, seven, eight years old, was in a uh, like a theater stage uh, production group. Right, we do shows and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It was a whole, it was a whole thing, you know. I was going to be an actor on the stage. Yeah. Didn't work. Didn't work out. <laughs> um, one of the shows, because there was like a few different groups from around this area. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the sort of yearly shows. I think I was I was only there for like three years. Um, one of the one of the groups of younger kids from somewhere else that you know, not the one I went to. Like they did a whole sit, did a whole like vocal performance and thing to "We Have No Bananas." Seriously. And it was like, yeah, oh my gosh. they did. Interesting. And I believe they were all dressed as monkeys. <laughs> Wow. Okay. I, didn't that song I have was the vi- like I, I have I have footage of this somewhere. <laughs> You'll have to dig it up. I want to see that. <laughs> I have footage of this somewhere. Um that is where I have heard that that before. I I completely forgot it was actually in this movie. It has been maybe a it is, it's been over a year since I last saw Sabrina. Um but, but yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> if you want to realize it, it's kind of the perfect thing to realize that this is also a little bit of a silly, goofy movie. Yeah, they like pepper in some silly, funny moments. But I liked this moment just because it was kind of showing her and Linus kind of bonding. Because Linus's whole plan is when she comes back from Paris, she's very glamorous. David yeah. sees her, picks her up, and doesn't realize it's Sabrina. This dorky girl who lived up you know in their garage and then once he realizes it's her he's she's the one he's in love with for the, for the week <laughs> for the week <laughs> while he's engaged to somebody else and the person he's yeah. engaged to is very important to the family business because the sugar cane that they mine or whatever is what they use in their fancy plastic it's essentially an arranged marriage. Yes. So David is marrying this girl essentially so that Linus can make a business merger with her father. So mm-hmm. now him being all smitten with Sabrina could derail this merger for the business. So Linus steps in to distract Sabrina and get her away from David so that, you know, him and his fiance yeah. can progress with what's going on with them so linus takes her sailing and they have this little moment where they kind of bond and talk and get to know each other and she kind of explains to him how she always she couldn't even ever even imagine him with a woman because he always seems so serious and all about work and business and he kind of opens up to her and so i liked that there was some development there and you could see that maybe even though this is kind of just a plan for him that maybe he actually is feeling something And maybe she is not thinking about David in this moment and she's actually getting to see somebody in a totally different light. So I did enjoy that scene. 
to give more credit to Humphrey Bogart than I think I have done so far, he plays conflicted perfectly. Yes. He's a perfect conflicted actor. Like um, you can see it in his face in just an expression. Yeah. He is realising that he's kind of like, oh, my plan's going to get screwed here because I'm falling for Sabrina too. Yes. And it's impossible to not fall for Audrey Hepburn, No, apparently. because she's so sweet and adorable and, I mean, that's like, true. fun and in, all the things that he is not. <laughs> and she brings out things she, in him yeah. that he didn't really know was there. And, yeah. Janine, she brings out things in him that he didn't realize he needed in his, in his, in his life. He didn't realize they were there. And he loves the fact that they are there. Yes. And he's struggling with himself because he wants the business to do well. But he's like, oh, I kind of want to keep Sabrina around as well, but yes, I can't. and I don't really want to hurt her, but yeah. And yeah. And again, Audrey Hepburn's perfect for a role like this. Because obviously, Audrey Hepburn in real life is also just as good wonderful as every character Audrey Hepburn has ever played yes um yes I was watching this show I think it's like this little thing on YouTube where this couple they will cook something from somebody like in history I guess and then they'll kind of talk about the person so they cooked this um pasta recipe from Audrey Hepburn and they kind of were talking about her love life. So that's how I found out the whole thing about in the, on this movie she had a relationship with William Holden and she broke up with him because he had a vasectomy. (laughs) 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 She she found out he had a vasectomy. So he, Audrey Hepburn's (laughs) like, Hmm. (laughs) Nope. <laughs> I know what I want and I know what's missing. Yeah. So that's why uh, Holden missed his shot because he couldn't shoot his shot. So. <laughs> uh, 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 but yes. Sorry, sorry William Holden. Maybe uh I I uh, not now I have pictures. <laughs> So what is the scene? Okay. Like, moving on. <laughs> what is the scene that you Moving enjoy? on from William Holden and his... <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> what is the scene you enjoyed from this movie? Honestly, uh, the admittedly kind of little stuff we get in Paris with Audrey Hepburn. I love it. Oh, with that learning how to crack an egg? Learning how to crack an egg because cracking an egg... Cracking an egg Everybody always says, you know, like it's it's the joke everybody makes about people who can't cook. And I mean, like, I can cook fine. I'm a, you know, I make food that doesn't kill people. In, and I make a variety of food. Um, but cracking an egg ain't that easy when it all crumbles. And in, with one hand. And especially with one hand. And I always, I always crack an egg too soft. And then it just ends up going... Because I don't like slamming things. It makes a lot of noise. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just just cracking the egg on the side of the thing. So proper. So proper. I just am very impressed by the fact that everybody is able to crack an egg with... Apparently it's all in the wrist, but I don't know what's up with my wrist. (laughs) Uh, Maybe I've broke it. (laughs) Humphrey Bogart wouldn't be afraid to crack an egg. I mean, if you want to say that you're taller than him, come on, you gotta be like the man's man. That's just and, a fact. And crack your eggs. <laughs> that's <laughs> Don't that's be just a fact that I that I'm taller than Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart never cracked an egg. Not you in this movie. Maybe, you don't know. In, he prob- maybe in another mm-hmm. movie. Well, he probably made bacon and eggs in his home. I, I mean, know. he had eggs in his business office, but okay. 
he did have eggs in his business office. We we must call into question the fact that Humphrey Bogart or Linus had a big bowl has a full of kitchen. fresh eggs in his office. <laughs> he has a full kitchen in his office at the plastics company. Why? <laughs> Nobody knows. There never appears to be anybody else in there, unless he calls them in there. Yeah. So, uh, does he just make an omelette in his spare time? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he likes uh, a, 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 some scrambled egg. <laughs> and he just decides, I know what I'm going to do now. I don't have to do anything for the next ten minutes. Eggs. I'm going to make an egg, yeah. Mm. <laughs> what uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> your one of your favorite scenes was oh, in the Paris, yes, yes. the Paris stuff. Um, yeah, I just find it kind of really funny because she's kind of getting f- uh, frustrated with herself. Yeah, trying yeah, to make a souffle she... and realizing her souffle didn't rise because she didn't even turn on the oven. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, yeah, it's very much kind of she knows nothing. She's so. Terrible. Boo. Boo, Sabrina. And uh, it doesn't help the fact that the, um, obviously the, the, sh- the teacher, the chef teacher, is the most French Frenchman you have ever seen oh, in yes. all of France. One of the many great mustaches in this film. And speaking of mustaches. <laughs> yay, the Mustache Hall of Fame is back. And we, uh, in fact, we do have to also um, induct, who we didn't induct a couple of episodes ago when you were last on, when we were doing Laura. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, Clifton Webb in Laura, uh, who was... um, what was his name? I don't remember his name now. Mr. Mr. D- D- it was a bit uh, Lydecker. Mr. Yes, Lydecker. Lydecker. In Laura. Clifton Webb. He, he's the probably the best performance in the movie. And uh, he is now in the Mustache Hall of Fame. And we should have put him in before, but he is in now. So, yay, applause for Clifton Webb. <sighs> applause for Clifton Webb. Now, and, if, um, you, if you have a great mustache... In life, but not in the particular movie that we saw you in. Does that count? <laughs> no, no, it, it has to be a movie mustache. That is the point. Okay. <laughs> that is why we have had some animated mustaches in here. Darn. As well. Why? Who are you thinking? I wanted to induct our boy Lionel Richie. <laughs> I don't think I mean, he had a particularly nice mustache in The Preacher's Wife. But he, mm. he is known for having a very nice mustache. Lionel, Lionel Richie is in known for having life. a nice mustache. I mean... You know, that's how we got all the baby girls, yeah. <laughs> From his mustache. Yes. That's how we got them all. It was his mustache. And his Richie's great performance as a skeezy club as owner a, in the preacher's wife who just like wife. this I'm not the rich year, baby girl yeah <laughs> <laughs> still will never understand why he felt the need to talk like that in that movie but yeah <laughs> I'm sorry I had to give you all the return of Lionel come home with me girl <laughs> yeah baby girl Let's sing see us my a mustache. song sing us a song and I'll show you my mustache baby girl <laughs> You can see my mustache up close if you come closer to me. Uh, if you have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> go and listen to the episode about the bishop's wife. Or because don't we... <laughs> and just have no idea what we're talking about because that's, that's it's just even funny better to do with Lionel Richie. Um, do we put Lionel Richie in the mustache? Because I'm pretty no, sure I, he didn't no. have a mustache in the pre- in the preacher's wife, did he? No. No, he didn't. And also, in the preacher's, the preacher's wife was wasn't a. <laughs> it's a wonderful podcast movie. It was a deja vu movie uh, okay. on it's a wonderful podcast. Um, I think it would be it would do a 
it would disservice. annoy the rest. <laughs> it would annoy the rest of the inductees of the Mustache Hall of Fame to have a modern mustache. To have a modern mustache in their club. Yeah, and to, okay. to also yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, mod, you say modern mustache. <laughs> um, you I know, apologize. a mustache that was mainly, you know, a uh, ma uh, a mustache that was. Uh, Mainly sported in the seventies and the, the early eighties. Yes, well, that's modern in on this show. <laughs> it is, it is, and and I, I, you know, that's the way I, I I like it. But no, I feel like Lionel Richie, as as much as that mustache <laughs> might have gotten him all what he wanted on in other life. circumstances yes. in other circumstances and he would have you know welcomed any any woman to come and touch his mustache <laughs> um yeah come on stroke my mustache girl, yeah. you, want stroke, you want to stroke my mustache Sing yeah. a song. Just get to stroke the mustache yeah use both <laughs> hands to stroke your mustache no, no, that's got weird okay, again. That's too, far, um, too far. Too far. Okay. Too far. Back up. Back up. <laughs> back up. Back up. No more Lionel. Um, but yeah, Clifton Webb, Mustache Hall of Fame from Laura. And the reason we actually bring this up is the French chef, Marcel Hilaire, is in the Mustache Hall of Fame and maybe one of my favourite mustaches oh, in the Mustache Hall of beautiful. Fame. It's tiny, it curls up, and it's thick. Yeah. It is Very the most Frenchy. French moustache. Yes. And he is the most French chef man you have ever seen <laughs> this side of Ratatouille. You know who else he, also had a wonderful moustache? Everybody in this movie. <laughs> Particularly. Every man in this movie. Father Larrabee. <laughs> Father Larrabee. He was the comic relief of this film. <laughs> yes. When he, things got he, he, very romantic was. or very kind of serious or emotional or a bit dramatic, Father Larrabee was there. <laughs> <laughs> the dad of the two sons would come in with some silly little skit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he he just didn't like anything that was going on. Yes, he was very complainy and whiny. And there's a whole sequence where Linus is just talking, and you're really maybe not supposed to be paying too much attention to what he's doing, but he's at the bar in the office trying to make a martini, and he can't get the olive out of the jar, <laughs> so he just does all this nonsense to try to get it out of the jar, until he just gives up and just pours his whole martini into the jar. And he's still fussing with this olive so much that in the middle of Linus talking, he breaks the jar and stuffs the olive in his father's mouth. <laughs> I mean... Or yeah. Linus finds his father smoking in his closet because the mother does not like smoking in the house. So Linus opens his closet and all this smoke comes out and the father's just standing there smoking a cigar. Like, okay... <laughs> I mean, the sight, the sight of an old man in a full tuxedo, in a wardrobe, smoking a cigar, uh, and also a very large cigar, yes. covering all of Humphrey Bogart's nice suits <laughs> in a really <laughs> strong tobacco smell. And he uses the excuse, oh, it, it keeps away the moths. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that they took the time to, like, do a little commentary on that. Like, you, that's what you're thinking. That's what we're all thinking. Like, he's going to make all his clothes stink. And then at that moment when you're thinking that, he says, oh, well, yeah, yeah, it keeps the what moths away. <laughs> It, uh, he As is, if he knows what it, we're thinking. He is very funny. <laughs> yes. He is. I, I do like. He does have a good. He does have a good mustache. But there is a rule that we only allow what? one mustache per movie in the Mustache Hall of Fame, and it just so happened that the chef had a beautiful. You know, it French takes French. more. Gr it takes more grooming to make a mustache like that than it does to make a mustache like Father uh, Larrabee's as admittedly funny as Father Larrabee is. 
um, in every situation because he literally is always with a martini and a cigar. Yes. And he's always upset. <laughs> Complaining <that> about something. <laughs> he seems to love Sabrina's father, the chauffeur, you know, Mr. Fairchild. Um, just because he's been around the family for so many, so many years, decades. Um, but any time any of his sons bring up Sabrina, it's just like, Who what, Sabrina? No business, business. <laughs> What's her name? That one girl, the, the chauffeur girl. Like, he acts like he doesn't know her name. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And he's ta- talking to uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Tyson's parents, who is the... Uh, She's Beyonce the girl that uh, of David. Yeah, she's the yeah girl David's supposed to marry. Um, he, he's completely faking any sort of. No, I don't know who this is. Who's this? No, 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 no. There's nobody else. Nobody yeah. else. <laughs> Only you. Sabrina, oh. No, 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 no. That's nobody. Yes. Only you. Marriage business, business. <laughs> Money business. Cigars, martinis. Olives. Yes. So he brings some nice little comedy relief and it kind of reminds you because you think it's maybe a romance and then you get these little nuggets of little comedic beats. And yeah, yeah. that's the thing. If you, you know, you might be going, you might look at this and go into this thinking it's a rom- like a more romantic drama type thing. It's really not. No. It's, it's definitely more on the lines of a rom-com and all rom-coms have that little bit of emotional moment towards the end of them. All of them do. Yes. I mean, um, when somebody that... is getting their ass sliced with glass, <laughs> then you know. When somebody gets an ass injury, then that should just yeah. cue you that it's probably a comedy. <laughs> I mean, how have we not talked about this I yet? don't know. <laughs> Janine, please, please talk about the fact that uh, William yeah. Holden, that David, might, you know... <laughs> So, as yeah. I mentioned, part of his signature move on the ladies, the baby girls, is to <laughs> put, Lionel the, Richie is involved. <laughs> put the flutes in his back pockets. So, he's doing this move for Sabrina. He say, plays a song. Sabrina knows all the moves. She knows what's coming. She goes to the, to the indoor tennis court to wait for him. And as he's making all his plans, Linus knows what he's about to do. And he needs to stop it. So he grabs David before he can go out there, tries to convince him to not go out there. He sees that he has the glasses in his pocket. So he gets David to sit down because he knows (laughs) that'll put him out of commission. And yes, as David sits, the glasses break and claw up his butt (laughs) with Um, some some not so great acting from William Holden with his... uh, reaction to sitting on some glasses was very silly <laughs> i mean you don't think it was great acting. i i i don't really pay that I, it was just a scream it was just I, like uh... yeah, it was like very <laughs> it was very silly <laughs> well, this is a silly movie what do you want from him i don't know it just was I don't know. Maybe I'm not. As, maybe I'm not as, as, as uh, take. Maybe I don't take as much uh, notice out of that. But yes, this is the part of the movie when Sabrina has come back from Paris. They're having another party because they always have parties every day, by the looks of it. And as David is um, now smitten with her, he invites her to this party. So of course she's yes. watched these parties from this tree her whole life. So to be finally invited to one by David, who she's completely in love with. Yeah. Is like her dream. And now she's obviously been uh, told to go to the tennis court. <laughs> and she knows what that means. And then, of course, when David doesn't show up, Linus goes in his stead. And that's when the kind of plan goes into motion. Where yeah. Linus decides also... to woo her and distract her. And... Yeah. But it's all, yeah, it's the start of, of Linus and. Uh, and Sabrina, Sabrina yeah. as a as a couple in, instead, really, even though it, yeah, like you said, it does start as a uh, trick almost, a ploy, but you know, turns into what it turns into. Yes. But yes, William Holden uh, hurts his his uh, yeah, and um, there's the plastic hammock. <laughs> oh my god, that was ridiculous. Which, 
I feel like, I mean, I was taking a bit of time there just to work up just to, to remember, <laughs> just to remember the fact that there's a plastic hammock. Yes. So these with a big hole in, in it. <laughs> these plastics come into play yet again. So David is out of commission. He's laid up on his stomach because, of course, he has an ass injury. And so his dear brother Linus brings him a hammock made of the fancy plastic so that he can lay on his back. But there's a nice hole cut in the plastic hammock so that his butt can breathe free. (laughs) So uh, naturally, what does David do is he falls through (laughs) his whole butt falls through the hole in the hammock and hits the floor. And we get another (laughs) yowza. And William holding is just stuck there with half his body crumpled up inside this hole in the middle of the plastic hammock. Oh, that was silly. That and whole it's scene very, is silly. It's very silly. Yes. Um, but this is the kind of thing that Billy Wilder can do and that Billy Wilder does do. Is he will... His stories are, are his stories are always very simple. Um, they always have legitimate emotion to them, but in his more romantic films, in his co- more com- comedic films, he will go silly. He will absolutely go silly. And sometimes it will be like a bit of slapstick stuff (laughs) like that. A lot of the time it's more, you know, witty, witty dialogue and stuff like that. But I think he he knew that with these actors... He could go there and have a little bit of fun with it. Yeah, somewhere like this rather than, you know, quick, witty dialogue. Because Humphrey Bogart, as, as good as an actor he is... He's no, you know, um, Jack Lemon when it comes to quick, witty dialogue. Yeah. You know, he's no... He, he's not like that. He's not that type of... Nobody in this is that type of... Actor. Actor, comedically. Yeah. Um, William Holden does what he can do <laughs> in terms of being a bit silly and... That's why we say that kind of, yeah, the father, Father Larrabee is kind of the funniest, <laughs> um, the funniest actor or the funniest uh, performance. In the movie. In the movie, just because he's, yeah, he's kind of always, always complaining and he's always doing the same thing. Essentially just complaining um, about things. Just compl- and complaining, complaining about Sabrina. Small- Smoking, smoking his and drinking huge cigar um but yeah it is it's very it's a very funny movie um it's a very like i said yeah but like i said it's a very simple movie and that is what you know that is what billy wilder does really well billy wilder you know all of his movies he never and it, he says this himself in, in plenty of stuff if you go and watch interviews with billy wilder or talks, you know, that Billy Wilder gave at some sort of event somewhere. Um, you know, he'll often bring up the fact that his scripts, you know, they never, he never wanted them to ever be overblown. He wanted to show everybody just exactly what they needed to know. He didn't didn't feel the need to explain anything if you showed one, you know, shot of something that would explain a five-minute scene. Yes. No unnecessary stuff, just enough to make you understand what's happening, to understand the motivations, and that's pretty much all you needed. Pretty stripped down and straightforward storytelling. And his, his movies are always like that, and his movies can be sometimes complex. And sometimes be a bit of a mystery. Look at Double Indemnity. It's, you know, it's a mystery. There's some complexity to it. Uh, But that's due, that's the plot. That's not the, that's not the the writing. Yeah. Uh, Look at Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard is a really complex study of, you know, what Hollywood can do to 
a faded movie star. Yeah, bitches be crazy. But it's very simple. <laughs> it's nasty. Yes. But it's very simple. It's my favourite Billy Wilder movie. Uh, but it's it's very uh, it's dark. <laughs> William very. Holden. Yeah. Better in Sunset Boulevard than he is in Sabrina. I mean, well, he had a little more to do besides his butt true. falling through a plastic hammock. Um. He, there was none of that. <laughs> he instead got, you know, yeah, shot. Yes. Um. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I... that's what. That's, that, <laughs> sorry, that's what. Um, that's what Billy Wilder does really well. Is create these very simple stories that seem bigger. And that seem, um, they just, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, they play out so tightly and just so, nothing is overdone. No. It, it, may, it means you kind of have to pay attention, but it also means you want to pay attention. Yeah, because you get all you, you, you need. If you're just really looking at it. Whereas, you know, some movies, obviously... Are a bit overbloated. Yeah, they t- they might tell, you know, the same story. But you can, you, you know, you, you can tell the same story in 15 minutes that you can in two minutes. It just depends who's writing it. Yeah. And it can come off the exact same. And in some ways it can come off better because you're not bored for 15 minutes going over the same explanation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all. That's that's the kind of strange, my uh, strange thoughts. I apologise. It is early morning. I've had a coffee. <laughs> I'm a little... Uh, I'm a little coffeeed up right now. <laughs> so... My mind's all... Darting around. Perfectly all right. Perfectly. Um, But yeah, I mean, as a fan of rom-coms and romance films, that's kind of my favorite genre. Um, It's nice to go back and look at early rom-coms because it's kind of nice to see, like, what inspired what has come after. And just to see, like, what things are similar, what things are different. Um, what people were doing then, what works. So, yeah, it's nice to kind of explore that and see those things. And for me, I was way more familiar with the remake. I had seen that yes. many times and know it very well. So I always wanted to go back and see the original and see how it compared. And so. I mean, you talk about, yeah, you talk about um, looking back on these older rom-coms or all the any older movie and seeing the inspiration for what has come since yes and that's a major reason that this show exists that's why we love doing this show because we can go back and see what yes. where uh, certain things came from or what sort of, what started certain trends or started certain tropes or yeah, did okay. certain did certain things that we may be tired of in movies, did them really well and did yeah. them a lot better. Like, or... I remember the first time I saw it happen one night and I was like, oh my gosh, this feels like those, you know, silly rom-coms where, you know, the two leads, you know, hate each other they and then they each love other. each other, but they don't want to admit that they love each other and one person thinks they love them and the other person doesn't think they love them back. And that whole... Yeah roundabout was done so well and i saw so many familiar things that i'm like oh that movie kind of copied that from this movie like yeah that played a big inspiration for a lot of other movies that i love so it was great to kind of see the origins of that so yeah yeah and i mean look at this one as well this is the perfect uh you know girl and two guys movie yes and like um, I said, I knew the remake so well, so it was really interesting to kind of go back and see the original and the differences and the similarities and what they kind of pulled from for the new version and how they kind of went about things. Um, yeah, it was very interesting to see. Well, Janine, considering you are so familiar with the remake, yes. um, 
do you have a little segment of Deja Vu, Deja Vu, Deja Vu, yay, Deja Vu yes, for I us. Do. <laughs> I do. Deja Vu, which is Janine's little <laughs> silly segment on this show that she sometimes does when she comes on talking about uh, any remakes of these movies that um, may have happened. It birthed Lionel Richie. It did. <laughs> and it now births uh, the 1995... Well, it doesn't birth it, but it now <laughs> includes the 1995 remake of Sabrina. Janine, yes. go ahead. So, yes, I was very familiar with this version of the film directed by Sidney Pollack, who was very afraid to do this film because he loved the Billy Wilder version, so he did not do it until he actually got Billy Wilder's... Uh, permission um, which i love yes um so in comparing the two i absolutely think the casting of harrison ford was perfect as linus he played that part so well yeah. and i feel like he did bring a bit more emotion to it than humphrey bogart did like he he was very serious because you know everybody kind of knows harrison ford as like this grouch <laughs> somewhat <laughs> <laughs> but he also does the romantic lead very well. And so he's kind of older. He's kind of serious, a little bit grouchy, but still very attractive. So I feel like he was perfectly cast the way he delivered lines, the, his little kind of sparring with David, um, him kind of trying to be sweet with Sabrina, but her kind of like calling his bluff um, like, you know, he's like showing her this little town where they own a house and she sees this beautiful building and he sees she's interested in it. So he lies and says, oh, yeah, I own that building. We use it as a halfway house to help uh, <laughs> help people <laughs> da, 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 and like total bullshit. Then he has to like tell his secretary when they get back. Oh, yeah. Uh, donate that building to the town <laughs> as a halfway house. <laughs> so, yeah, like. I liked that in the remake, we got a little bit more development with Linus and Sabrina. We got to see them do more things together and you got to kind of see the emotion more of him being conflicted. Whereas kind of Humphrey would give you a look that you kind of got that sense or he would kind of be silent in moments and you would kind of see him look at her in a certain way and you'd get that sense with Harrison. Like he kind of expresses it, um, just in things like there's just a line where he's getting into the car and he's kind of feeling conflicted about what he's doing. And he even says, you know, I like Sabrina. I've always liked her, but I have to do this for the business or whatever. So yeah. like, yeah, you, I felt it more, I think from Harrison that he was conflicted in his okay. plan. Um, but that he really was falling for her and he was kind okay. of, so and even moments you see him softening, like you see him laugh and be silly a little bit yeah. and, yeah. And I mean, that might be, again, going back to what we've kind of just said, that might be the difference between how Billy Wilder writes and how other screenwriters write, is that Billy Wilder thought, might have thought, you know, one little look from Humphrey Bogart was enough for was everybody enough to get. to get it. Yeah. And we, and we do. We, we get that. And so, yeah. But I, I just, like, I felt, I felt it more with Harrison's performance, yeah. I feel like. Um, Julia Armand. I do feel like... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I do feel like Harrison Ford is the is the um, Harrison Ford. Damn it! I've now forgotten what I was going to say because I was too worried about <laughs> you talking. Sorry. God damn it! Are you cocking Harrison, up my segment? I'm cocking up everyone's segment. Um, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford gives the best performance in in this version. For sure, and he is also, um, you know, in terms of who gives the better performance over the two movies. Yeah. Um, Harrison Ford's Linus is just as good, a little bit different, yeah. if not better than Humphrey Bogart's Linus. Whereas the other two leads are in the in the ninety five version are nowhere, nowhere near, near as good. Yeah. Well, for me, and David just, David is pretty similar to William Holden. Um, 
I feel like maybe he's not as silly, but I feel like this movie is not as played as silly as that one. So that makes it different. But I feel like, wow, for me, Harrison is maybe a little bit better. David is kind of the same. And Julia Armand is nowhere near as good as Hepburn. Ju- While the, she, the thing is- at what she is there to do, she's great. She's very kind of soft spoken. I like that they have her kind of call Linus's bluff on things and pull his card on things, um, which I don't feel like maybe Hepburn did really in the other one. Um, but she's she doesn't emote as as varied as Hepburn. Yeah. Uh, no, she she doesn't hold a candle to Audrey Hepburn no. for me. Um, in terms of Greg Kinnear or William Holden, uh, I feel like though their characters were actually really different. I felt like maybe that's just and maybe that's the time the, the the time that the movies were set and came out. Maybe that is. But Greg Kinnear felt very preppy to me. Okay, he felt yes. kind of like someone you'd see in Caddyshack. <laughs> As the preppy guy with the sweater tied around his shoulders. Yeah, rather than... Um, <laughs> like suave, Will- cool. Yeah, because yeah. William, William Holden is essentially... He's not showing off with what he's doing. He's just... That's just the way he is. Or I yeah. feel like Greg Kinnear's David is kind of like... Trying. Oh, yes, I'm this... I, I'm, you know, this... Yeah, a, a little bit. I... Uh, and everybody's still perfectly good. I think... Greg Kinnear is perfectly good. I think Julia Ormond's perfectly good, but I just don't think those two are anywhere near as good the as level Harrison. of perf- performance that uh, no, uh, they're nowhere near the level of performance that Harrison gives, and they're nowhere near the level of, yeah, of their counterparts in the original. Of their counterparts in yes. the original, whereas Harrison is yes, he is up there with Bogart in in this with this uh, the performance of of this character. And like you said, it is a little bit different. You do get more of him as well. Yeah. You get more emotion from, from Harrison. And that's something I really appreciate. You get more of Sabrina in Paris. Yeah, that's what I loved the most in differently in this, this film. Is that, like, Paris is supposed to be something that completely has changed her. She was very mousy and quiet and just kind of stuck on David and didn't really have a life. She goes to Paris to kind of grow and learn and be on her own. And they show that in the original, they didn't really show that they showed her taking one class. She meets some old man who helps her. And then you see her writing a letter home. And that's basically it. In this one, you see her like failing miserably many times at her job there, um, meeting people who mentor her. She meets a guy who takes her out, takes her around the city, has great conversations with her. And you see how she's really changed and grown and how Paris has kind of influenced her very much and how she could love it as much as she does. Um, yeah. And I appreciate that so much that, you know, I, I wish we would have gotten more of that in the original. So that was something in comparing the two that I really loved about the remake. I feel like that is the main takeaway from Deja View. Yes. In this one is the fact that... Um, you know, 1954's Sabrina, maybe due to the fact it is a Billy Wilder script, is tighter and gives you less, or gives you just enough to what of what you need. And but maybe, maybe it would maybe it is nice to see more, like we do in the 95 version. We see more of Paris. We see more of the relationship of her and Linus, and you know that added explanation is kind of it's worthwhile it doesn't feel overblown necessarily no um i don't think it's as pacey a movie no but that's kind of what billy wilder always did he made his movies really snappy he wanted to keep everybody's moving going attention all the time everything was going even if it was a slow scene everything was still going fairly quickly yes and um, I just have to give some props to Mother Larrabee in the remake. Of course. <laughs> who is the counterpart to Father Larrabee. Yes, yeah, she in is the very original funny. Because... She has some great moments and some great lines and <laughs> yeah, she she brings she does. Yeah. She breaks the the tension and the bits of drama and like heavy romance and kind of that kind of stuff with her little commentary on things and yeah. 
I mean, she yeah, she it's, was great. I mean, I I I know her mainly as as Lydia Soprano from The Sopranos. Uh, obviously, Tony Tony Soprano's mother. Tony Soprano was very manipulative. Every, nobody in The Sopranos likes Lydia Soprano. Um, so she she's kind of just like whenever I see that. Uh, that actress's face now it's just like oh god it's Lydia Soprano oh no <laughs> but you liked her in this uh, movie in her but life. I like no I did like her in this movie because she was she was playing exactly the same role that the dad was playing in in the older one yeah but she did have some heart at the end when she kind of heard Linus's plan to just leave Sabrina alone and just let her leave and pay her yeah. off to kind of go she was like you know I didn't raise you to do that so I appreciated that they gave her some heart, unlike the father who was just like, get rid of this girl. Who? What's her name? I don't know. <laughs> like, she was actually like, you know, you're good. How, what about Sabrina? You know, are you okay with hurting her? I did not raise you to be that kind of person. So she does have some heart and kind of instills that in him at the end. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. There's, there's more conversations in the 95 version that we know would have happened Watching the 54 version, we know conversations like that must have happened to get us where we get. But as we discussed, but we just don't Wilder, see them. yeah, Wilder keeps it very tight and shows you only what you, yeah. he feels like you need to get what's happening and to get the character's motivations. And we do get all that, which I really appreciate. It's really great filmmaking to be able to do that, to be able to keep it yeah. as simple as that with so many characters and kind of a, a very a somewhat complex plot. Um to keep it so tight and still give you what you need to know and get and get you a sense of these characters and what they're feeling in such a tight way. Yeah. There you have it, guys. Another installment of Deja Vu. De you have to sing as well. Deja Vu, Deja Vu, Deja Vu. That sound. <laughs> we need to work on that. I, th I feel like that probably <laughs> sounded... Horrendous, but that's okay. Um, yeah, to wrap up, we might as well talk about the... In fact, what we haven't brought up yet is the fact that La Vion Rose is played about 400 oh, times. A billion in the movie. times. Yeah. And Audrey Hepburn actually sings a great version of La Vion Rose. So oh, yes, that's beautiful. Great. That's, that's uh, yeah, I love that. Um, in fact, that's kind of that's kind of one of my favorite scenes, and I haven't even talked about that. Uh, yeah, well, okay. And you get the cute that was one of my hat moment. Scenes. That's very sweet. Yes. Yeah, the cute little hat moment between her uh, her and Linus tipping the uh, rim of the, the hat down, side, which yes. plays in to the, end, the end of the movie. Yes, I love things like that in romantic movies. So so sweet. <laughs> because romantic you know what callbacks at the end. So she's on the boat and she thinks she's alone on the boat because she knows Linus's plan. He told her that, yep, yeah, I was sending you off on your own. And she's like, OK, I guess I'll go off on my Back own. Back to Paris. Back to Paris because I love Paris anyway. And you've broken my heart. And then a guy on the boat brings her a hat and he says, "This somebody asked me to have you pull down the brim of this hat and she's like what <laughs> and she's like looking around and then there's linus waiting for her on the comes, boat yeah linus comes walking up doing his best gene kelly impression yes <laughs> with his umbrella with his umbrella because she that was also another callback she always said she would watch him and see him with his briefcase and his umbrella and Looking yeah. all stodgy and serious. <laughs> I mean, he, he does look stodgy and serious, but he's also clearly very happy that he got on the boat. Yes, he is. So, very sweet callback, which is something I love in romantic movies. So, very nice ending. Very nice ending. We, we, we don't get a Sabrina 2, The Adventures of Linus and Sabrina in Paris. <laughs> European road. Sabrina 2, <laughs> European road trip. Oh gosh! <laughs> no. Which um, is not something anybody Sabrina too like needs to Electric see. Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. You don't um, want to hear the electronic funk version of no. Livian Rose. Of Livian Rose. <laughs> no, no, I do not want to. Say, yeah. I would much rather hear the traditional version of Le Vion <laughs> like Rose. Like 20 billion times. times. Yeah. 
Um, mm. Even though it fits really well and it works really well in the movie, yes. it is slightly played yeah, too a little much. bit overused. Just, but hey, I mean, it, it, Paris. it's kind of like oh, oh, France, oui, oui. France, Paris. Sorry, we know. <laughs> 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 we know what we know. We know what French. French. What? What's French? Le'Veon Rose. Play it. Play, play it. Play it. Play it. Yes. Is there is there any more French songs that we know? No. No. It's just this one. Play it. Play it. Play it more. <laughs> Should, could we play the French national anthem? Screw the French national anthem. We're isn't it Le'Veon Rose? Rose. Is, isn't that what? It is? <laughs> no, French national <laughs> anthem isn't Le'Veon Rose. <laughs> I know. I'm just Come on, kidding. Billy Wilder! What are you doing? <laughs> they should have been singing that in Casablanca instead. I mean, yeah, that would have kind of made. Let's think about that. To <laughs> that fi- would have shown <laughs> him. A, that would have shown him. <laughs> as a final thought, if you switched La Vie en Rose and the French national anthem in Casablanca and in this movie, how different it would have played out. Yeah. Everyone probably would have fallen I mean, in love. <laughs> it's probably a little more serious to get rid of the uh, the French national anthem in, in, uh, in Casablanca. Because that scene's kind of like very... We, we, we've all come together as a you know, as a people. Yes. Then the soldiers and, um, would have just fallen in love with the nearest person by them and it would have been happy ending right there. And it's hard to look at the world through rose tinted glasses when there's a war going on. Um Fair enough. Although and and also, yeah. I feel like the scene of Audrey Hepburn singing Lovey on Rose, if that were if she was instead singing the French national anthem I'm sure we'd have all just been like, oh, well, she clearly just wants to go back to Paris. Yes. <laughs> She's clearly turned French. <laughs> and screw the rest of the movie. No, that that's just weird. That is just weird, Janine. Do you have any final thoughts on the movie before we get out of here? Um, just as someone who knew the remake so very well, it was very nice to finally watch the original, and I greatly enjoyed it. Yeah, um, it's been like I said. It's been it's been a little while since I, uh, since I last watched Sabrina. And I like I like Sabrina. It's a it's an enjoyable movie. It's a sweet movie. It leaves you feeling all nice, uh, with that very pleasant ending. Some of uh, some rom coms, of course, have a more of a bittersweet ending. This is not a bittersweet ending. This is a full blown. Yay ending. Yay ending with a nice little callback. And I must say thank you to Thank you to me. Friend of our show Morgan hasn't seen. Oh, well, not thank you to me. No, not thank you to you. Never friend, thank you to me. Friend and fan of our show Morgan hasn't seen. Carla. Carla Fee. Yes. Thank you, Carla, for suggesting this. Yes. yes. There you go. So thank you, Carla. You're awesome. I mean, she is Morgan hasn't seen's number one fan. She is, she is. So she does have that honor. Um, yeah, there you go. I can't say much else about Sabrina. It's a wonderful movie. It's a sillier movie than you might think it is if you're going in watching it for the first time. And it is well worth uh, putting in a nice Billy Wilder marathon and you can yeah. a Billy Wilder a truly a Billy Wilder marathon can last several days um just put this one at the because, end because uh, so there's some there's some tough stuff in there but great <laughs> there's some tough stuff in there you could put anything at the end you could put the apartment at the end lovely mm-hmm. ending Hashtag put some Janine like it hasn't hot. seen Hashtag some like Janine it hot. hasn't seen you know the ending of Some Like It Hot, though. Um, Nobody's perfect. Uh, gotta go. Come on. <laughs> oh, Scott, I can't marry you. I'm a man. Well, nobody's Spoilers, perfect. Spoilers, Morgan. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. Do you not, under- not realise that Jack Lemon's a man? <laughs> it's not a spoiler. 
Okay. <laughs> there you go. Another episode of It's a Wonderful Podcast, episode 67. We have been talking about Sabrina from 1954. We had another segment of Deja Vu. And it's, it was great. We had Janine back. And Janine will be back, I'm sure, fairly soon again on I the main so. show here. But Janine, where else can uh, can 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 they hear your thoughts on on movies? You can find me on this very feed on another wonderful show called Morgan yeah. Hasn't Seen, uh, where we dis- discuss a series of related films and that Morgan hasn't seen. And funnily enough, yes, and we go through them and we pick a bonus film related to those films and discuss that as well so we are coming up to the end of our fast and furious series right now um we will be watching hobbs and shaw and that will be our episode next week our bonus episode as we roll into our next series which i will tease at some other time you you will tease (laughs) probably during the hobbs Hobbs and and shaw Shaw episode episode, so which will be up next uh Wednesday. wednesday And then you right. can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Janine Dabeen. Uh You can see me on the movie trivia showdown as Janine the Machine. I have a weekly Monday articles called Machine Mondays on the Trivia SD website. I have a tea Public shop where you can get uh, It's a Wonderful Podcast shirt or a Morgan Hasn't Seen shirt uh, on yeah. Public at G9 Design. And I have a Patreon at Janine Elsie. So stop by. I got some fun little things going on over there. You got some fun little things going on everywhere. I do. And there's more fun little <laughs> things going on on this podcast feed as well. Not only with Morgan Hasn't Seen, which is a great show. And you can listen to me and Janine be silly every week on that show, um, which is very fun. Or, uh, you know. There's also this show, the main show, the namesake of the feed. It's a wonderful podcast where we love to talk about older movies. And yes, you can find the show on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, CastBox, Google Podcasts, and the rest of them. Leave those five-star rating reviews on Apple Podcasts. It helps the show. If you love this show, or if you love Morgan Hasn't Seen, go and do that you can find the show on twitter at it's a wonderful one find me on twitter at the purple lone with a three instead of the e in the because janine three is the magic number you see that's what janine always does every single week janine will do that or morgan hasn't seen so you know go and listen to that just just to hear that but you can also find me on instagram at just the purple dawn um yeah that is about it i'm always on this show it's great i love talking about older movies i love billy wilder and i love sabrina and i also love audrey hepburn janine because she's great we all do she's wonderful and she's very silly and she's very sweet like us and everybody's great (laughs) like us we are also great silly and sweet and isn't that just the perfect way to be guys Until next time, on It's a Wonderful Podcast, it will be episode 68. Maybe we'll do a movie from 1968, who knows? It'll be very nice if we did do that, but I don't know. So, until then, bye. Bye. Yowza!